So uh, you told us that long story about your mural in, in Kenya, and here we have this incredible uh, nine-foot painting here called Evolution. You wanna, how is it related? I mean, it's related in the sense that I love animals, and they're disturbed by animals, especially powerful animals, and I think the evolution was created by powerful beings, or else it would not be an evolution. So, the purpose of our life becomes increasing our power in the sense of our mental and physical capacity conjoined in order to procreate the ones similar to ourselves. So this is very symbolic for the evolution of most powerful animals are tigers and, and lions and there's a rhino and a big brown bear and an elephant and an African black bull. And actually a little rat is sitting here. I mean rats are also very successful, not very not very big, but very successful. Plus the woman. Now, this is one woman, another woman, there are some uh, parts of a third woman, and I think there is another woman yet. And there is another woman yet, and it shows that to me in the evolution of mankind, woman is number one element, the most important element, much more important than men. We're about the fleeting moments. I'm sorry, Richard. <laughs> Very good. This one, I think, has intrigued a number of people. Uh, oh, this one. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I had a couple that came in that both said this looked exactly like someone they knew. Mm -hmm. A very powerful woman who was a, I believe they said, was a, uh, a pilot of an oh, airplane. Oh, oh, so. Tell us a little about this unusual she, person. Yeah. She may have been a pilot because initially she was constructed as a, conceived as a kibella, a mythological figure, which in Greek mythology means uh, the mother of God, who was by the, by the myth she was married to uh, Cronus, which was struck by Oedipal tribulations and, uh, and uh, worried that uh, every newborn male of his will be a rival to himself. So he ordered this woman, when she was young, to give him every newborn male so he would digest him. And she has given away four of her newborn male children, but she had hidden and concealed the fifth one, whose name was Zeus. Instead, she gave Cronus, she wrapped up, instead of the male child, she wrapped up a stone. So Zeus, uh, so Cronus had devoured the stone and died, died out. So Zeus became the god of gods in, in Greek mythology. Then humanity have made many transversions of this woman. They've made her a spirit of earth and they've made her even a powerful witch in the legends of medieval Germany where on the Mount of Brogsburg there was a Sabbath of witches and Sevilla they called her, Kibella. She was running that Sabbath. So the woman who penetrates with her very eyes through the time and space. So she may have been a pilot very well. <laughs> a pot. Turning this way, I think we have one of the unique pieces in this show. Uh, most of the others seem to have a narrative around transformation and religious uh, allegory. And here we have what looks like a classical uh, nude uh, in, a, in her boudoir and uh, we're not given a lot of details of who this might be so tell us a little well, about this I one. cannot give away who it might be <laughs> but uh, and it's not painted from the uh, model I mean I did not paint anything from anybody uh, alive nude uh, model in nude but uh, I was asked during my Venice Biennale exhibition this year uh, when they looked at my, uh, somebody looked at my Judgment of Paris, which had uh, big adult nudes, uh, ask, asked me to paint a nude woman upon the bed of Casanova. And uh, the exhibition of mine was in the Palazzo Mirati, which is former house of Casanova family in Venice. So, it had to be some particular woman whom they knew, 
and uh, I had to produce three newts, and this is one of them. Interesting. Interesting. So this girl is actually to that uh, Museo de Arte Contemporanea Italiana in America. Where? In it's located in Costa Rica, actually. But oh. it's run by Italian government. I, I love this color. Oh. Yes, and there is another one with three paintings, a series of three paintings I've produced. The other one is behind that wall. Tell us about Alexander, tell us something about this one. You wanted this to be under your name and uh, in the kind of place of honor as people come in. It's yeah, this painting has been painted a long time ago, about 2000. And uh, although it's more conceptual than a uh, realistic image, I and mean, the uh, musculature and everything else is rendered rather symbolically, but that wasn't the purpose of a painting to show the male figure. The purpose of a painting was to show the concept of what will we see if we dice if we dissect the human corpus. And of course we will see the lungs and see the heart and we'll see the stomach and we'll see the liver and we'll see the intestines. But also between the liver and the lung we see this human head. It means this man has been stuck with something. Literally, we have it under our inside, sitting inside of our liver. Because when we stuck upon somebody in life, uh, psyche translates it into our bloodstream, and our blood also is becoming stuck, literally stagnated. And since liver is an organ that moves our blood, distributes throughout the body. This is symbolism of this stagnation. Somebody's image, perhaps his brother, who has done him wrong, or oh. to whom he has done wrong when he was a child, or later on, or yeah. maybe an image of his unborn son, or something else. And yet there is another image, as you see, somebody is lying down, nose up, eyes and nose, in between of his intestines. Also, he is all stagnated. And also you see some imagery there within the lungs of human shape and human forms and so forth. So it's just dissected. And since I was a surgeon in my, in my lifetime, I was a surgical oncologist. Uh, I guess 10 years later I finished with surgery and well, went full time with the painting. I probably was missing surgery, so I decided <laughs> to make my operation. <laughs> So the figure itself is really a metaphor for memory or pain or some emotional content that is also an organ, as you kind of right. put it, that needs to be utilized and digest its own material and it needs to function. Exactly. And this is the power of art as opposed to the power of science. The art is most powerful language because with this we could show metaphysical yeah. physics. You, unlike That's science, totally I've been criticized actually by uh, for this figure uh, by some people who said why is the penis so small? And I said it wasn't the purpose of this painting. If you want me to paint a perfect human a male figure with a big penis, I will do it for you for good commission of money. But the purpose of this painting was to dissect, and that's the rest is pure, pure conception. Which is amazing. I oh, get it. I oh, get it. That was uh, kind of mesmerized by it. You know, it can get completely. I like it. Uh, yeah. Painting. Wow. This is about. Well, one final one that seems to be a little more complex in terms of its. Uh, allusions to things and figuring them out. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little about this painting. Uh, this is all, all entirely also our fantasy in terms of process of embryogenesis because I am fascinated by the way we are conceived. I mean it's incomprehensible to me when one cell of a male body and one cell, one little cell of female body fused together and I'm born, and Richard is born, and Montserrat is born, and Natalie is born, and my daughter so perfect in her anatomy and physiology and psychology. It's, it's just very strange. 
And I'm sure, I mean, even Ayurvedic, they have concept, concept of not only physical matter, but spiritual matters conjoin in the process of embryogenesis. Not even spirits of their fathers and mother, or physical or astral body, or, uh, or mental body of uh, mother and father, but also the ancestral spirit is participating in this process. And uh, immediate you know, consciousness of parents plus universal consciousness of parents are also, what Young is interpreting in his books, also participating in this process. In other words, it's a mesmerizing array of uh, possible uh, hypotheses and interpretations of what may lead. And this is, for example, might be a formation of male zygote of uh, spermatozoa, and this is fine, uh, formation of female counterpart of ovum ready to, ready to uh, fuse with each other in this very physical process. This is a powerful painting. And this is painted also a very long time ago. It's not oil, it's uh, acrylic on wood. It's painted in 1996. I think it was. It has so much 